so my question is kind of related to the fact that I think the U.S. is very well known for typically being, you know, a fairly progressive country, and I think it's really interesting how when you look at reproductive health care, um, especially in the U.S., uh, access is kind of becoming dependent on a woman's zip code, and access in New York is very different from access in other states. And I'm very lucky to be a resident of New York, but when you go to states like Alabama or Mississippi or Louisiana that currently only have one abortion clinic, um, it's almost like another world. So my question for you guys is, how does, how does that compare when you look at those specific states or other states like Texas or Ohio that are currently in the news for you know very restrict lo restrictive laws being passed there. How does that compare to the work that you do like in Latin America or Sub-Saharan Africa? I mean, I, it's, it's frankly very similar. I, you know, first, you know, many, many countries around the world, abortion is illegal, right? Um, Two thirds, I think, of countries in Africa and, and Asia. So we're talking, you know, uh, very similar situations. I think that we'll find that the spike in maternal mortality has to do also with in uh, lack of access to abortion in places. Um, you know, great people have to travel great distances. People are doing things that are unsafe. There's a perception that um, you can use other methods, but you still need to have some form of supervision in, take, in using other methods. So um, to me, it's very similar, and I've actually worked a lot in the US South. Um, so. No, I think like it is very interesting because when I mean about this perception about the U.S. and I, I may be politically very politically incorrect here, but I when I moved to the U.S. I, I honestly I was very I mean I, and I live in Brooklyn so but I was very surprised to see how like I mean this idea of like the really progressive country it's not really it again it depends on when you live like but if you see for example that things that we are fighting for or that in, in many countries, or things that we have already achieved in most of the countries in the world. Most of the countries in the world already that ratify CEDAW, for example, not the US. Like the CEDAW protocol, like we're like aiming for that, not the, like not the, the convention of the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women, and not the US. Like when it comes to inequalities, like this country is one of the most unequal countries in the world. When it comes to teenage pregnancy, I mean, like in many countries, we're really aiming to reduce teenage pregnancy. The teenage pregnancy in the US is going in the high when most of the countries is like really reducing. And if you see, I mean, like the, the, the sexuality education programs in schools, it's some of the, the ones that some countries like in, in Latin America have stopped using in the 70s because they knew that it were not working. So I think that many times under these a kind of mask of you were like in the front of the world with super progressive, this is hiding all the inequalities, all the, the, the regressions that are really in the US. And I, I think it is really important to show, it's really important for American people to point at, at, at those inequalities and, and again, like. I've been very involved in the sustainable development goals, so I'm biased. But I think that like the, the sustainable development goals in in a way it gives it give you an opportunity because different from the Millennium Development Goals, the, the MDGs were an agenda that was kind of funded by the North and implemented in the South. It was a like poverty reduction agenda, mostly with this idea. One of the big negotiation points when, when the SDGs were being negotiated was like to say this is a universal agenda that needs to be implemented everywhere and every country must come back to this to this stage to that stage at the UN and report on what they're doing to reduce maternal mortality to reduce poverty and that and that gives everyone especially the, the, the countries in the north like the US for civil society to go and tell your government, so what are you doing to, to reduce SDG 10 inequalities? What are you doing to, to reduce inequalities in the US? What are you doing to reduce maternal mortality in the US? And I think it's a possibility to bring to an international forum the reality of the US that is, as you were saying, a very uneven reality. So I think that's a very good question. And you have an opportunity, I think, like, like American people have an opportunity to use that state to really out or like make more visible their reality in the US. Even that question I was working on, 
Do we have laws that guarantee access to sexual and reproductive health? Do we? What's your definition of sexual and reproductive health? Is abortion in it? Is it does it exist for girls 15 and above, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you'd really have to answer that question, probably no, if you look at the majority of states and you include abortion. I remember, like, I mean, during the discussions on, like, the inclusion or not of uh, contraceptives uh, on the insurance, I was already living here, and I was surprised. I was, like, completely shocked, and in, I'm Mexican. In Mexico, we have a, like a different type of system. We have social security, so like I mean, the government provides a lot of services, and contraceptives are free, are free for everyone. Like you go to the clinic, it's a system that like in many countries, like uh, like the social systems are in crisis. They have a lot of needs, like they they are underfunded and that. But one discussion that we are not having is if women have the right to access contraception. There are other many discussions, but that discussion. So I was very surprised how strong and violent and like the, the, the question about access to contraceptives was. And again, it's like how the most progressive country in the world is having this discussion when we have had access to free contraceptives for everyone even people under 18 for free since, I don't know, the 80s. 